Good evening, my name is Lance Vader, and I'm going to do a Star Citizen video today. I'd like to show you how to mine for Quantanium using the Prospector. Um, first, before I bring that up, I'm going to show you what I've got on the Prospector. Right now I've got the Lancet Mining Laser equipped. And we're going to put on a couple of modules, a brand, an optimum. We're going to put on a couple of optimum modules. Um, it doesn't, the modules don't really matter that much. There's a couple others I'd love to have, but they don't sell at this particular station. Um, the uh, station I'm at is Arc L1, and I'm going to be going to Lyria, and I'm going to be mining some Quantanium. So our first step is to get the prospector out. And through the magic of editing, I'll be able to uh, skip some of the boring parts here. All right, we're in the seat. We're going to be taking off. And we're going to set course for our core. There we are. We're one quick jump away, and then we'll be going to Lyria, which is one of the moons of Arc Corp. Personally, I like to go to an orbital marker and then guide my ship in. It makes me feel like I'm, I'm picking a, a mining spot uh, for myself, but really, you can just jump to one of the uh, uh, markers on the planet, one of the the little outposts on the planet, that's fine too. <clears throat> Boom, that was fast. We're at Arc Corp. And then We'll be jumping to Lyria. All right, so through the magic of editing, we're already down here. Uh, you'll notice this is a nice deposit. You can see in the, on the right hand side of my screen there. Um, we're experiencing a little bug where it doesn't fully scan the first time. That's okay. Um, I want you to notice a couple of things. First off, one of the first things that it'll show you when you're scanning one of these rocks is what kind of deposit it is, what type of deposit. Uh, the deposits we're looking for are Quantanium deposits, so that's that's easy to remember. Uh, quantanium shows up in Quantanium deposits and only in Quantanium deposits. 
uh, nothing else. So very easy for us to check those rocks for quantanium uh, as we're going. Okay, obsidian deposit, that's not what we're looking for. We don't even have to scan the whole thing. We can just see that it's an obsidian deposit. And we know that's not what we're looking for. The quantanium I have found typically shows up close to mountains in cold environments. And Lyria is all cold, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, All right, so let me tell you a little bit about this process, about what's going on here. Um, what we do is we trigger pings with tab, and we look around for boxes. Everything will show up as a box. All of the, the mining nodes will show up as boxes. Uh, the larger rocks uh, are um, for mining with the uh, prospector, which is what we have, um, and it'll show up. It'll show up like that one. Okay, here's our first quantanium deposit. And we're going to see. Okay, I don't think this is going to have much. Nope, it didn't. Uh, now, the reason I was able to tell ahead of time that it didn't have much quantanium in it is that I looked at the optimal window. You can see on the, the right hand side of my mining uh, mode, there is a charge level and with a green optimal window and a red overcharge window. Um, the green optimal window for uh, quantanium is very, very slim. You'll know it when we see it. Uh, this optimal window that we have right here is much wider than the uh, quantanium window. So that's how I knew that there wouldn't be a lot of quantanium. When there's a lot of quantanium in a rock, it has a very, very slim optimal window. When there's very little quantanium in the rock, it ha can have a very wide optimal window. Uh, and it has the widest optimal window when there's no quantanium at all, because quantanium is, as of right now, uh, the most difficult substance to mine. It has very high instability. It has very low, uh, a very low, small optimal window size, and it is uh, very unstable. It is, so it has all of the three difficulty makers there. Um, high resistance, high instability, small uh, optimal window size. Those basically are all the things that control the difficulty while mining. Okay, here we go. Here's multiple rocks in one node. Uh, and anytime you get multiple rocks in one node, you will see they are quantanium on Lyria. Uh, there are some other moon, plenty of other moons that have uh, other things. And you'll see, okay, this one has a very slim optimal window. I want you to compare these two optimal windows. See, that one's quite wide compared to the other one. It's got 2% quantanium versus 12.5%. Um, usually, when I am mining for my own self, I'm not trying to, uh, to record it. Um, Sometimes I'll, I'll leave these. 12.5% uh, is decent, but it's not, uh, it's not ideal. Um, these uh, 
quantanium deposits can have uh, up to about 50%. I don't think I've ever seen actually 50%, but I have seen 49.5% quantanium deposits. Um, anything above 40%, obviously that's a rock you want to crack. You want to take the deposit, the quantanium, and you want to take it away. Uh, anything over 30% is very rich, and you definitely uh, want to crack that rock. It's not the, the mother low that the 40 percenters and above are, but 30% is very good. Uh, you are very likely to leave with a lot of quantanium with that rock. Anything between 20 and 30% is still really good, but... Um, not, not a sure thing for a full load and anything between 10 and 20 percent is well it's okay it's it's acceptable um more picky miners will find this completely unacceptable now you'll notice that this is taking us quite a bit of time uh the mass on this rock is 5364 um so it's it's a fairly massive rock with the Lancet mining laser, we won't really be able to crack anything over about uh, 5,500, you know, uh, maybe 6,000 if you're, if you're patient and you bring some, um, uh, some helpful tools to reduce the resistance or you bring some modules or something. Um, there are rocks on Lyria that are you know, 8,000 in mass. I, I imagine these are probably, probably kilograms? I don't know. Uh, I do know, however, that um, if, your, um, if your rock has a mass of 5,000 whatevers, probably kilograms, we'll say kilograms. If it's got a mass of 5,000 kilograms, then um, it will take up 100 SCU of space. So this one's a little over 5,000. This has 12.5% 12 quantanium. If this were exactly 5,000 kilograms in mass, then it would have exactly 12.5 SCU of quantanium in it. And so we can expect that there should be like 13, maybe 14 SCU of quantanium in this um, in this rock. We don't know exactly if we'll be able to get it all, but ideally we will, hopefully, and um, it depends on whether or not we get good breaks. So we're gonna crack this rock. It's just getting to the optimal window now, and we will see if it will Crack. Okay, now that it's in the optimal window, we're going to back off our power a little bit. Okay, it's telling me power is critical. Boom. All right. So then it'll crack into pieces. If, uh, if you let it overcharge while it's uh, charging then it will have a more violent explosion if you let it overcharge a lot it that can theoretically blow up your ship so just do, do be aware of that let's see so we've got so what we're really hoping to see when we do this is we're hoping to see lots of rocks like this one that have no quantanium and lots of rocks that have high percentages of quantanium. And we do not have that. So we got four rocks with very middling percentages of quantanium and one rock with very low percentage of quantanium and one with none. That's, that's a, a pretty dirty break. Um, and we'll, we'll see if this rock treats us well or treats us poorly from here on out. Hopefully we can get a few of these rocks 
to break a little more cleanly, but that's it's entirely up to the RNG. The RNG gets to decide whether or not we have clean breaks, whether we have clean breaks or dirty breaks. And however it shakes out, them's the breaks. Alright, so we're going to break the others just like that one and see how that works out. Okay, now that we've got all of our big rocks with significant amounts of quantanium split up, we're going to start scanning these little ones. We're going to right click to go into extraction mode. And we're going to try we're going to avoid hoovering up any of the rocks that don't have large amounts of quantanium. That one's half quantanium. Uh, if I had a much richer rock, if I had like a, a rock that started out with 35% quantanium or, or 45, I probably wouldn't go for one that was half full of barrel or, or you know, 68%, 69% quartz. Um, but this rock did not have tons of quantanium. I'm not really expecting to have lots of pure samples uh, filling up my cargo hold. And, uh, so I'm going to be hoovering up a lot of uh, very dirty samples. Ooh, that's a good one. 100% quantanium. 
and that's got a mass of 100, so it is 2 SCU. Um, every 100, every 50, mass of 50 is 1 SCU. So there we go, we're going to hoover up a bunch of these. Goodness, we have a lot of dirty breaks here. Well, that's that's okay. Now you'll notice that as I have started to uh, take up this quantanium that uh, my ship is telling me that we've got uh, some volatile cargo stored on board. That is the quantanium. It is volatile cargo and it gives you a countdown timer. Um, when that timer reaches zero your ship explodes. Uh, so we do want to avoid that um, if at all possible. And it is very possible. It is, it is very pretty easy to avoid if you're um, doing things reasonably correctly. Um, so that's why I decided to um, break these all up and then start hoovering up the good ones. Um, boy, there's a lot of not very good ones. Um, yeah, so I decided. So you, that's what you. That's the process that you use in order to make sure that the uh, quantanium spends as little time as possible in your cargo hold, because the countdown timer doesn't start until you first pick up. That, that first little bit of um, quantanium and that's that's when the uh, the timer starts and at everything after that counts so, so make sure you don't start vacuuming them up until you are ready to vacuum all of them up until you uh, if you're if you've got quantanium on your ship and you're still breaking them apart, then uh, you're more likely to have a bad time. Okay. Cargo full. Yeah, okay. We're going to get up out of the atmosphere. While we're getting out of the atmosphere, we set our destination. And Arc L1 is just a little hop away. Now, when you are carrying volatile cargo, for the <clears throat> it uh, when you're carrying quantanium. It lasts for about 15 minutes, and then when you've got, uh, when it's halfway to uh, blowing up, then it starts. Uh, you, you get a, a little warning sign, a little yellow beep in uh, in your face, and a friendly reminder that you have that volatile cargo, and you need to drop it off at a refinery within a few minutes. So once that starts, you have seven and a half more minutes. Um, if that um, 
if that yellow beep starts and you haven't already started going towards the refinery, then you need to go towards the refinery once that starts. Um, <clears throat> then when you have one minute left, it uh, turns to orange and you get a, a more urgent beep. And then when you have just a few seconds left, it turns to red and you get a very, very urgent beep that tells you that you need to jettison your cargo. Um, if it starts turning orange, then it's probably too late to save your cargo. You should you should be out of your ship before it, it turns orange and hits that one minute mark. Um, not to say that that will definitely, if, if you're landing at the refinery right as it turns orange, you know, you've got a chance, but um, I wouldn't, wouldn't count on it. That might just blow up in your face. All right, so we've arrived and we're going to make our second jump to the station because that is way faster than flying that whole way at regular engine speeds. Now, do be careful on your approach and when you're landing, you do not want to make a rough landing because if you hit anything with your volatile cargo, uh, it will explode and uh, detonate early, and we don't want that. Um, oh, hello. Yeah, lately it's been doing that. It's been giving me the uh, kind of a, a weird greeting, truncated greeting. Okay. Oh, this is not what I wanted, but all right. The police are scanning me right as I'm at the station. <sighs> Fortunately, my cargo hasn't started to beep yet. I don't, I don't have the yellow flashing light. I mean, I'm going to be fine. It's just... Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm glad I'm free to go. It's just an example of, of the kind of delays that you can face here. All right, I'm going to be landing very slowly these landing pads are huge for this class of ship so we're good all right store the ship and once you store the ship you should be safe um, in the last patch 316 I um, stored a ship and then um, for some reason for whatever reason uh, I the I wasn't I didn't refine the uh, minerals that were in it and it had some quantanium and when I got in it the next day um, I was expecting a, a regular prospector that was empty, but I uh, got a prospector that was full of quantanium and it uh, beeped a, a yellow beep at me. Uh, and so I hurriedly put it back, got it stuffed to the refinery, and that worked out just fine. So once you store it, that countdown timer should stop completely. And it, it should last overnight there but we're, we don't want to let it last overnight. We want it to start processing basically as soon as we can get it. There we go. 
All right, so we're, now we're going to go to the refinery. And this will be a short uh, elevator trip, especially if I decide to edit it. the minerals and now when you get here to the refinery you'll notice that there's a lot of uh, refining methods but most of them are trash um, for quantanium the most important thing and a lot of times I'll refine the barrel too I have a really big freighter so for me it's it's you know, no skin off my back to refine the uh, uh, the barrel. Uh, quartz really isn't worth pa even paying the refining fees. Um, uh, but there's a bunch of methods here. Um, what we're looking for is high yield, right? So pyrometric chromolysis, that's one of the methods that's okay. You can get a quote and for 16,000 they'll refine all of that. Uh, with pyrometric chromolysis, I believe it's electrolysis. No, not electrolysis. Ferrum exchange also has a high yield. It's got a lower cost, and then um, Dinix is the cheapest of all of the high yield methods. Uh, so you got the Dinix solventation, Ferrum exchange and pyrometric chromolysis. If you're in a hurry, you can use pyrometric chromolysis. If you uh, are not in a hurry, Dinic solventation, and then uh, Farron exchange can, can be kind of a uh, halfway point in between that. Um, usually I use Dinix, um, and I'll only use one of the other two if I want to, if I, if I have a bunch of orders that are all ready and I want to get my last order uh, ready in time for a big shipment all the way over to the market. So there you have it. Um, this was not a particularly rich quantanium yield. We were yielding about a thousand, a little over a thousand. So this one will be worth approximately a hundred thousand uh, credits when I take it to market, probably a little less than a hundred thousand credits when I take it to market. So I'm going to get a whole bunch more of these before I do any, before I, I put load them onto a freighter and take them away. Um, let's see, yeah, I don't have that freighter here. So there you have it. That's how you mine quantanium and. Um, uh, Star Citizen version 3.17. Um, if you have any questions, please write them below in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Or I will tell you if I don't know the answer and uh, can't easily figure it out. All right, thank you very much and uh, fly safe. Um, have fun and uh, and that's all I had for today.